And our next guest thinks when it comes to the TSX versus the S&P 500, you shouldn't be surprised if going forward we see some outperformance for the Canadian stock market. Let's find out why. Brian Belsky is Chief Investment Strategist to PMO Capital Markets. Brian, great to see you. Great to see you. Good morning, Canada. So I guess, first of all, how would you describe, I've been asking basically all our guests for, for their take on the mood of the markets, because there's all these headline things we constantly hear about as worry points, but here we are looking at stocks higher right now. What, what's your best guess on how investor, what investor sentiment looks like right now? Well, from a sentiment perspective, uh, in those investors so focused on macro data, you know, the macro data, quite frankly, is bipolar, right? So the, the retail sales numbers are very good, meaning the economy strong. But, you know, the inflation numbers last week clearly spooked people. And, and I think the realization, quite frankly, is a combination of both, Jonathan. I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to be in a higher for longer environment with respect to 10-year treasuries which, oh, by the way, is very normal. We started talking about the normalization process of markets back in our year ahead piece for 2023 that we published in November of 2022, saying this period of normalization uh, is gonna take a number of years as investors kind of get used to the fact that we're not going back down to zero or 1% interest rate. That's kind of number one. Number two, uh, you know, we've been cautious on the market the last four to six weeks, given the ascension and really the dominance of momentum. Anytime that price momentum kind of leads the market, uh, you can tell that it's really more of a FOMO, meaning fear of missing out type of move where a lot of investors are chasing stocks versus kind of wanting to own stocks. Doesn't mean that our 25 year secular bull market thesis for the United States market has changed. It just means that we need to take a little bit of a breather. Earnings have been good. So obviously we have a backup there in terms of support, but we do think the market could be a little squishy here uh, into the spring, especially considering what's going on with inflation. Okay, so a lot to chew on there. And then when you look at the makeup of the Canadian market versus the makeup of the U.S. market, on average, what's your, what's your view on where we could see stronger performance? You know, I, I think that Canada is really well suited to transition uh, into this broadening out and, and benefit from that. And let's just take the Magnificent Seven as an example. If you take a look at what's happened from a fundamental perspective and price performance perspective, the makeup of the Magnificent Seven has actually changed. Not enough people are talking about this. And so we have some stocks that have fallen out of the Magnificent Seven. And for instance, Berkshire Hathaway is now number seven. Tesla is now number 12 in terms of ranking in the S&P 500. And I think that shows that we're starting to see some spreading out overall and why we like Canada in particular is because of the more value and cyclicality of the market in particular. Plus, we think Canada is one of the best contrarian markets in the world. And we think that there's opportunities where investors have kind of left some stocks and abandoned some names that we think are very well suited for a surprise turnaround. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because we had a guest earlier who was somewhat cautious of um, stocks that have struggled, particularly those that are known for dividend payments. Uh, we've got our communication services subgroup in this country, which has really struggled. It is the worst performing subgroup this year. But that's actually, to your contrarian call, a group you're watching very closely. Yeah, that's why we should like it. I mean, by the time it shows up on the Globe and Mail and everyone talking about it on TV, that means you should buy it. And we think that it's a great contrarian name, especially considering the type of free cash flow yield, operating cash flow yield, and consistent dividend yield. Now, remember, not just the banks pay dividends, these big telecom companies. And remember, the communication services sector in Canada is very different than the one in the United States. Primarily, you still have more of the telecom companies in Canada relative to the more growthier names in the U.S., Okay, and so as an example of that, like BCE, which is the parent company of this network, but that's an example of a, a stock that you'd be watching. Yes, because many analysts have downgraded the stock after the stock went down a lot. Uh, earnings, I think, are, are going to be okay. The problem with BCE is, is this large dividend, and people are worried that they can't pay the dividend. If you take a look at free cash flow yields are now below the 9% dividend yield. However, operating cash flow yield, minus, uh, not, that does not include, obviously, the CapEx that BCE has been spending a lot of CapEx. Uh, actually, we think it's very, very strong at around 18, 19 percent. So we don't see a dividend cut in the future. Do you think um, just because communication services is a group that gets caught up in a trend like utility stocks or even real estate stocks um, in this environment where we keep pushing out uh, a rate cut 
uh, plan, or at least the markets are trying to assess that. Um, would, would you would you say there's a similar theme on your contrarian call to, to those other groups as well, or some names within those other groups? Yeah, very much so. I'm so okay. glad you brought that up because you know REITs REITs uh, historically do better than the other two sectors, meaning communication services and utilities, in a higher than normal interest rate environment. And we think, too, you have kind of the double whammy of the fear of rates not going down for a while, plus the continued fear of housing and commercial real estate that has been kind of hurting the REITs. We think REITs are also an excellent contrarian opportunity at these levels. And then finally, Brian, I'm sure, um, uh, uh, I'm sure that we're talking about it in Minnesota as well, but in Canada, we were talking about milder weather <clears throat> this uh, past winter, which, uh, especially if you're a retailer, it can complicate a whole bunch of things, like which inventory is moving. Canadian Tire had been impacted by some of the milder weather, uh, but that's another one that you wanted to flag today. Yeah, I know it's going to be uh, it's 70 degrees in Minnesota Fahrenheit uh, today. It's gonna, that weather's coming to Toronto tomorrow. So what's that, uh, 20, 18, 20 degrees Celsius, if I do the math correctly? So we're not buying snow blowers and shovels. Now we're going to buy uh, some two-by-fours and things to, in, in yard bags to fix up our yard. I think that Canadian Tire is a name that, that has been kind of unjustly uh, pushed around. The Canadian consumer, just look at Aritzia, how great that sector's done this year, or Dollarama. And I think uh, Canadian Tire will be next, the next second, the second half of the year, especially given the strong dividend around a 10 P.E., Great cash flow yield. I think it's a name that you can just buy and clip the coupon in terms of the dividend, and I think it's kind of been left for dead here.